All right, so obviously before we start any, you know, youth group lesson, we always need to spend time with God and we're going to be in prayer. So let's all close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, first and foremost, I just want to say, Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for bringing us all here safely and securely. We pray and ask, Lord God, that you open up our ears so we can hear you, open up our eyes so we can see you, open up our hearts, our minds, our souls, so that we could seek you. We pray, Lord God, that whatever you teach, that you engrave it into us so we won't forget it. Help us, Lord God, to not only be listeners of your word, but listeners and doers of your word. Help us, Lord God, to not be distracted. Help us, Lord God, to not be swayed away by anything. But help us, Lord God, to be focused and to think with a sound mind. And as for me, Lord God, I'd just like to pray, Lord God, that you speak through me, that you flow through me, this is your preach and not mine, so I give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and all the credit. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so basically, right, as you could tell, the title is The Holy Spirit. Um, there's so many new believers here. Well, actually, not really anymore. We used to have like 30 people, and now we're at like 11, but it's whatever. Um... For the new believers and for the people who have been believing for years, the Holy Spirit, get used to him, right? He's your advocate, he's your friend, and he lives inside of you. Once you give your life to Christ, once you go under that water during baptism, Jesus baptizes you with the Holy Spirit, man. So get used to him, get comfortable with him, and be led by him. I'm going to speak about this later on in, in another slide, but start being led by the Holy Spirit instead of your emotions and your feelings. Last week, Thursday and Sunday, Manny talked about devotion over emotion. Look, the emotions are going to sway. The emotions are going to be kicking in. You're going to be sad. You're going to be ha happy. You're going to be mad. All of the above. But stay devoted. And the only way that you can stay devoted is by through the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? ABC, staying your word, praying, and worshiping. All right? Um... And as the topic of the Holy Spirit, you can't really put the Holy Spirit into a box. You could spend your whole life, I could spend my whole life preaching about the Holy Spirit, but it wouldn't even be a smidge of covering all that the Holy Spirit is, what he does, who he is, really. So, yep, let's get into it. So first and foremost, um, who is the Holy Spirit? I want you guys to get comfortable with the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of you. He's your friend, your advocate, like I said. So if we have our Bibles, could we turn to the first book, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 2. All right. So verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So basically, when in the book of Genesis, when... When whoever is writing this, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Fast forward. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Holy Spirit didn't start working. The Holy Spirit didn't start acting in the book of Acts. He actually started acting and working since the beginning. right? Because as you could tell, as the Bible tells, that the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So basically, what is God the Holy Spirit, the one triune God, three persons, one God. I mean, a Muslim would say, how, how does one plus one plus one equal one? My, my boy Alex says, doesn't one times one times one equal one, right? The one triune God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, three in one, right? Second thing that I, I have down is he's the advocate. If you guys could turn, turn to me, turn with me to John 1426, please. All right. So John 14:26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will, will remind you of everything I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit, his, he has a name. He's also called, he's called the advocate. He's going to help you. He's going to teach you the things that Jesus previously taught. He's going to teach you the Bible. Um, so many times in my life, especially since I've given my life to Christ and I know that the Holy Spirit lives inside of me, 
there's times in my life that the Holy Spirit would remind me of, of bi certain Bible passages. He would remind me of certain scriptures, right? He's an advocate. He's going to guide you. He's going to help you. And like, for instance, he's going to advocate you. He's going to help you. He's going to lead you to live a holy life, right? So many times we get caught up in trying to believe in a workspace gospel, right? Manny says this to me. He says, um, holiness is not the way to the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit leads you to holiness, right? That, that's a bar, dude. That's a bar. That's a bar. So, in saying that, and third thing, the Holy Spirit is a person. Uh, there's so many times in the Bible that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, is referred to as he, so he has pronouns. He's a he. He's a he. He's a person. He has feelings. He has feelings and emotions just like you, right? Um, he doesn't have flesh, but he's also, he'll, he's also still a person. Um, I'm going to, the Holy Spirit through me is going to talk about it later today, um, talking about grieving the Holy Spirit, right? So it shows, the Bible tells us to not grieve the Holy Spirit, to stay away from grieving the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it saddens the Holy Spirit. So it shows that the Holy Spirit has feelings, has emotions, right? And the fourth thing, um, the famous pastor that I look up to, his name is David Diga Hernandez. Yeah, he's great. The YouTube shorts, the Instagram, YouTube, everything, right? So David Diga Hernandez, Pastor David, he calls the Holy Spirit heaven's greatest evangelist. I want everybody to turn to John chapter 16, verse 7. If we have that. So John chapter 16, verse 7 through 11, it's Jesus speaking. He says, but very truly I tell you, it is for your own good that I'm going away. Unless I go away... The advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. So... For instance, what does an evangelist do? He convicts you of sin. He convicts you about God's righteousness and about the coming judgment, right? Um, everybody who's been drawn to Jesus was drawn by the Holy Spirit, right? Um, like, for instance, when Manny was speaking to me, it wasn't Manny. It was the Holy Spirit through him speaking to me into my heart, to my soul, right? It's, it's like when the Holy Spirit speaks, you can tell a difference. It's like speaking life into a person that's full of death and darkness. You know what I mean? Um, and first thing, when he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin. If you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, when you sin, when you fall, you're going to be convicted, right? Say, hey, this is wrong. We've got to fix it. I'm going to help you to fix it. Second thing. He's going to teach you and help you about God's righteousness. He's going to teach you about the, hey, we got to live up to a certain standard, right? It's not, it's not perfection, right? We're not really chasing perfection, but it's progress because the Holy Spirit's working through you to chase after God's righteousness. We ought to walk. We ought to seek for God's righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. That's biblical, by the way. Um, and third thing. God's judgment, right? To the unbeliever, he's going to speak to you. He's going to tell you that God's judgment is coming. Um, like I said, Pastor David, a uh, famous pastor, he believes that, that there's no such thing as an atheist, right? Because the Holy Spirit moves. There's no way that you can see all of this and think that there is no God, right? You can see all these miracles, and there's no way that you could think that there's no Holy Spirit. He says that there, there's no way that 
that there can be any atheists out there in the world. Um, not only that, but that's biblical too. Everybody else in the, everybody on this world knows that there's a God out there. That's biblical. Um, and about God's judgment, um, God holds His wrath with patience. Right? There's a coming. You know, we've we've read the book of Revelations with with Jordy. He's he's went over it. Um, and God's judgment is coming, right? If you're not with God, you're going to hell. If you're if you're with Him, you're going to be seated with Him at the finest dining tables. You're going to be in paradise with Him, right? Um, but God's judgment is 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 righteous and it's also just. You can't enter heaven without any blemishes. You can't enter heaven without any sin. And this is not works based, right? You're saved by grace through faith. You're saved by what God did on that cross for you, right? If you have, if you tried to pay off your own sin with your own, with your own doing, you're gonna be sent to hell, right? You're, you're not going to heaven because of what you have done because of your own works, right? And so the Holy Spirit is gonna tell you about the God's judgment. Um, like I said, Second um, Peter three nine says that the Lord is not slow. In keeping his promise, as some understand slowness, slowness, instead he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So this shows that that the Holy Spirit's going to convict you that God's judgment is coming, and God is going to hold His judgment from the world because He's patient with you. He doesn't want any soul to perish. He doesn't want your unsaved family members, your unsaved friends, to perish. No, not yet. Not yet. Not ever. Not ever. I'll say that. Um, and without the Holy Spirit, how could you fear God? Right? How could you fear God? I got a quote here. It says that the unbelievers fear everything but the Lord, but the true believers fear nothing but only the Lord. Right? So many times, like, I got people, I got friends who who don't believe in, in God. And when they open up to me with their problems, when they open up to me with their with the obstacles that they're facing, you could sense that, that they fear it, right? They're scared of it. And so when I ask them how do they deal with it, they don't even deal with it at all. They run away from it. They go to what? The clubs, partying, drinking, smoking, sin, all of that. But see, here's the thing about, um, here's the difference about unbelievers and believers, right? I told this to somebody. I said, when you're a believer, you don't run away from these problems. You run through them, right? Because the Holy Spirit's the advocate. He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you to overcome any obstacle, any problem that you face, right? Whereas the world... They run away. They don't get to go through it. They run away. They go to the clubs, partying, drinking, smoking. Like I said, sin. Because they can't, they don't have the power to face their problems head on, face to face. So like I said, the unbelievers fear everything but the Lord, but the true believers fear nothing but only the Lord. Next slide. Many preached about this last week, Thursday and so Wait, was that last week? It felt so long. Um, he preached about being led by the Spirit and not by your emotions. He preached about devotion over emotion. Like, like I said, like Manny said, like the Holy Spirit said, your feelings, your emotions can be like a roller coaster. You're going to take bumps, bruises, cuts, this, that, and the third, right? But through it all, you have to stay committed. There's so many times that, that if you read, Paul is, is writing to Timothy, cling on to the faith, cling on to the faith. He's, he's speaking also to these churches, cling on to the faith. What did I preach about last time? Faith, clinging on to it, right? Through it all, right? If you have the Holy Spirit, he's going to lead you through it all. You've got to trust him. You can't be led by your emotions. You can't be led by your feelings, Um for instance, the Holy Spirit brought this up. There's so many times in the Bible that it has a biblical character. It has a, 
a man in the Bible. For instance, it says in the Bible, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. This person was led by the Spirit into... This person was led into the Spirit into... Now, the Bible's already been written, right? But let's say if you were to be in it. Would it say, Stephanie was led by the Spirit? Or would it say, Stephanie was led by her emotions and her feelings? Right? There's a big difference. See, when you give your life to Christ, when you give your life to Christ, let's put the feelings and the emotions away. And let's, let's bring up the Holy Spirit. Start being led by the Holy Spirit, guided by the Holy Spirit. Um, you start to become who you hang around with. You start to become who you hang around with. If you're hanging around with people from the clubs, you're going to hang around like them. You're going to dress like them. You're going to walk like them, talk, live like them. If you hang around the people around your church, you're going to be like them. Same applies to the Holy Spirit. If you hang around with the Holy Spirit, the godly character in you is going to, is going to persevere. It's going to grow. You know what I mean? You, you, you become who you hang around with. If you hang around the Bible, the Bible is going to live through you. You're going to see it in your actions and, you, and you also your words, right? So as far as devotion over emotion, let's stick to this and not that, right? So many times. Um, Psalm 143, verse 10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. That's David speaking. Now, he's a king. He, could, he has the authority over all of Israel, right? But he surrenders, he submits to one God. He doesn't want to be led by his own thoughts, his own feelings and emotions. He submits, he surrenders to God. He says that, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. See, a lot of this is surrendering. Surrendering to the Holy Spirit. It's submitting to the Holy Spirit. Um, for example, today at work, if you don't know what I, what I do for work, I, I, clean, I clean car windshields. I spray glass cleaner over it. I wipe it wipe it down, and I put tape, and then put it in the cart. That's all I do for eight hours. And out of all those windows that I do in a day, I broke one today. I broke one. I dropped it, right? It came out of the cardboard thing, and I dropped it. And I showed it to my boss, and, and he, got, he got extremely pissed, right? I hope you guys don't have bosses like that. That stuff sucks. It really does. But he started cussing. He's like, damn. A thousand dollar window sh windshield, just just like that, a thousand dollars, and you dropped it in your hands. And in my emotions, in my own flesh, right, I wanted to retaliate. I wanted to say something, right. I wanted to get revenge. I wanted to say something, really. But is that is that really being led by the Spirit of God, right? No. Your flesh wants to retaliate. If, if people say something mean about you, obviously you want to say something back. But hold it back. Hold it inside of you. And the Holy Spirit's like, all right, I messed up. You know what I mean? Right? Right? Yeah, you kind of messed up my train of thought. Um, you're lucky I'm Christian. <laughs> Yeah, you just start rolling up your fist like you really want to do something. So that leads me to my next slide. Grieving and pleasing. Grieving the Spirit and pleasing the Holy Spirit, right? Galatians, I'm a, I don't know if you guys want to read from your Bibles, but we got Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 26. So I say, hey, Alex, I'm going to just be reading that. Okay. Okay. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. 
they are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. 19. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfishness, ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Right? So basically, actually, I'm going to read this. Yeah, I'm going to read that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us, not, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Right. So basically, um, there's really only two paths that you could take. Either you're walking according to the flesh or you're walking according to the Spirit. If you're walking in the flesh, if you're walking in the flesh, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So they're going to go to hell. Something like that. Right. But if you're walking in the spirit, if you're walking in the spirit, you're going to enter the kingdom of God because you're led by the spirit. He's going to teach you. He's going to help you. He's going to advocate you. Right. For example... Back to that boss analogy. The flesh, I wanted to cuss bro out. I wanted to cuss my boss out for, for yelling at me for dropping one window out of what the hundreds that I do. But is that very self-controlling of me? Is that very gentle of me? Is that very kind and good of me? Is that very faithful or gentle of me? Right? There's an example. Um, Jesus said, you know, and I... An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, something like that. But he said, like, like as far as getting back, getting revenge. Um, he said, well, by the way, he said, leave vengeance for me. But he also said, pray for your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who hate you. Man, and this really it hurts your pride. It hurts your ego. There's so many times that I've gotten into an argument with somebody that I know I'm right, and I had to apologize for it. And, and there's sometimes that I tell him about these arguments, and he tells me that I have to apologize for it. That, like, that's the way of Christ, right? Because if you're not walking in this, how could you be gentle? If you are walking in this, how could you be gentle? How could you be kind? How could you show the love of God, right? Um... I, I say this to God all the time before I go to sleep. When, when people see me, I pray that they see you. I don't want them to see me. I don't want them to see this. I want them to see that. I want them to see Christ through me, right? When people see me, I want to be a mirror reflection of God. Now, I'm not saying I'm God, right? But as far as a godly character, if I could lead somebody to Christ. Um, another, another quote, right? Um, you may be the only Bible that people could read. That's a bar. Yeah, that's a bar. Hey, you're cooking right now, bro. I can smell it. You're cooking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, throw something on the ground. Throw it, throw it. Look, you could be, you can be, <laughs> you could be the only Bible that people ever read, right? It's hard being a Christian because in the flesh you want to do all this stuff, right? A lot of people who went through deliverance, I went through deliverance, right? You could cast out demons, but could you cast out you out of you? <laughs> but can you cast you out of you, right? Some of you guys here, right, don't need deliverance. You need discipline. Uh, oh. <laughs> Here's another one. <laughs> no, um... Some of you guys don't need deliverance. Said, or what the Holy Spirit through me said. 
sometimes or all the time, you may be the only Bible that someone could read, right? Um, I'd like to add to this, though. Demons know the acts of the flesh, okay? So demons know what our bodies desire. So what demons will do, they will tend to you for you to give in into your flesh. Now, how can you tell what's the difference between the flesh and, the, and a demon? When you keep giving into habitual sin, when you keep opening the door over and over and over again, in the spiritual realm, demons will see that. So when they see that this Christian is playing around with a certain sin, that's how they will enter a person. And that's how do you know if it's a demon? If that act of the flesh keeps getting worse. So for example, with sexual morality, yes, our flesh is lust, right? With pornography, fornication, or sexual morality. But if someone keeps giving into that act of the flesh, in the spiritual realm, a demon of a spirit of lust can come in, and in that spirit, then you'll have thoughts of abusing people, raping, you know, I'm telling you, you will have these thoughts, you'll be like, what the, where is this yeah. stuff coming from? You see, now, not, not only is it just flesh, now it's a demonic spirit. Even people that with anger issues, okay? You would give in to the fits of rage over and over and over and over again. And then, then in the spiritual realm, the demons will see that. And then the spirit of rage can come in, which can lead someone to harm someone else or even commit a crime. You know what I'm saying? Even to addictions, into habitual things, drunkenness, jealousy. So that's the difference. Max of the flesh, and then there are demonic spirits that can be connected to that. So demons, they know that if we give into the flesh over and over and over again, demons can take that as an advantage and come inside of us. Yeah, that's good. Okay, maybe some of you guys may need deliverance. <laughs> but some of you guys who got freshly delivered, I pray that you this point, yeah. I pray that you didn't open any spiritual doors, right? To to any demonic attack. But if you haven't, if you haven't opened up a spiritual door to a demonic presence or entity, whatever, you need discipline. So start being led by the Spirit. Instead of grieving the Holy Spirit by walking in this. Start pleasing the Holy Spirit by walking in that. You become who you hang around with. If you're hanging around with, with yourself in the flesh, you're going to become more like the flesh. If you hang around by the Holy Spirit, if you're talking with Him, if you're praying with Him, you're going to become more like Him. Um, next thing, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 states, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and of love and of self-discipline. 1 John 4, 4 states, You dear children are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is out there in the world. Romans 8.11 states, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, and just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. Um, I get it. I'm starting to get it frequently. Um, especially after the camp. People were like, Man, I wish, I wish I could preach like you. I wish I could be bold like you. Um, Manny gets this. I wish I had... The authority to cast out demons just like you. Look, demons, they're not scared of me. They're not scared of Connor. They're, the, they're scared of the one who's in me. They're not scared of Manny. I don't, they're not scared of Manny. They're more powerful than Manny. But they're scared of the one who's in Manny. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that lives in you. You, as a believer, because you have the Holy Spirit, you could cast out demons. You could heal the sick. You could raise the dead to life. I haven't seen that personally for me, but I guess I guess you could say because technically you are raising people from the dead. From spiritually dead. Yeah, right. 
raising the spiritually dead back to life. I mean, shoot, like, look at these new faces. <laughs> Those two. And, and that, that wasn't in my doing. That was, that was in the Holy Spirit's doing, right? Um, nothing, nothing really. They went from being delivered, and now they're going to be doing deliverance. So. Okay. We need women that are female slaves now. True. Right, like, I don't. No, 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 you're good. Look, but yeah, there's nothing that separates between me and you. If you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you have the authority, just like I do, to cast out a demon. To heal the sick, to raise the spiritually dead or physically dead. If you got it like that, it's back to life. Nothing, nothing else is different. The only thing that's really different is that I, me, I'm kind of more aware of the power that's inside of me. Right? I said this last time at the camp. Satan knows how powerful that you are because of the Holy Spirit inside of you. God knows how powerful that you how powerful you are because of the Holy Spirit's inside of you. But do you know how powerful you are? Now, Satan's going to throw so many darts at your mind, right? Don't pray for this person. Don't, don't deliver this person. Send them to Manny. Send them to Connor. But did you forget that the same spirit that's inside of you is the same spirit that's inside of me? Right, Joel? Um, so there is no really big difference. It's just... I want to highlight something, and I want to, I want to bring awareness to the power, to the spirit that lives inside of you. Nothing's different. It's just that I am more aware of the spirit that's inside of me. It all begins with faith. Faith and confidence. Faith is not hoping. It's confidence. It's assurance, like I said last time. Um, so do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Um, I want to highlight this one. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them. Because the one who is in you, Holy Spirit, is greater than the one who is in the world. So basically, you got God, us, Satan, all the way down here. All the way down here. And he's going to throw so many darts at you, especially now that the Holy Spirit has highlighted this in your mind. The Holy Spirit's... Uh, Demonic, or Satan, Satan's going to be throwing darts at your mind saying that you're not powerful, that you can't cast out a demon, that you can't do this, you can't do that, right? But you ought to know the scripture, the scripture, the scripture, the scripture. Like I said, stop being swayed by your emotions and feelings, stick to the scripture, stick to being led by the Spirit of God, right? Next slide, in Psalm 139, Verse 7 through 12. All right, so the psalmist here. Um, is this, I got a question. Is this David before yeah. I start? So this is David after he sinned, right? Or no? no? I don't know. All right, anyways. Y'all good? All right. The psalmist here, David, he's writing, where can I go from your spirit? Now, when I read this, I, I kind of, titled this, The Pursuit of the Holy Spirit. Um, there's, there's so many times that it may feel like God is a million miles away because of you sin. Because there's so many times that I've sinned and, and I felt like the Holy Spirit left me. But the psalmist here is saying, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Look, no matter what, you cannot run away from the Holy Spirit. Once you give your life to Christ and once Jesus baptizes you with the Holy Spirit, you can't run away. Am I saying this is as, as a license to sin? By no means. Do not use this as a license to sin because the Holy Spirit is still inside of you. You could grieve the Holy Spirit. Stop grieving the Holy Spirit. Start pleasing the Holy Spirit by walking in the fruits of the Spirit. Um, and... No matter what, no matter what, the Holy Spirit's gonna be gonna be there. Uh, like I said, he feel a million miles away, but he's still there. Um, I want to highlight one thing. If I say, "Surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me," even the darkness will not be dark to you. 
the night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. So the psalmist is saying, really, like, even, even if I ask, if you, even if I say to the darkness to hide me, the Holy Spirit's still there. I say this so many times, the lights could be turned off, the sun could be down, but I'm still walking in God's light. You could be in turmoil, you could be sin, you could be in the gutter, but the Holy Spirit's still there. This is the pursuit of the Holy Spirit. So many times, like I said, the devil's going to be throwing flaming arrows at you, into your mind, right? But you can't, you, you can't, you can't believe him, right? Because the Holy Spirit's still there. He's going to say, oh, God's not there for you. God left you. But even if you are in the darkness, even if you are in sin, the Holy Spirit's still there, even in sin. Next slide. Um, my boy, David Diga Hernandez. He's a great pastor. Ch please, yo, check out his stuff. Please check out his stuff. He's on YouTube, by the way. He's coming this October if you guys want to join me. In yeah, he's coming. <laughs> Somewhere in Chicago. I don't know. He hasn't given out the real details. Right. So somebody needs to hear this right now. He said this. He said this last night on his live stream. I was in it. Don't wait for your feelings to confirm what the scripture already promises. Don't wait for your emotions or some experience to validate the truths that are clearly laid out in the scripture. We can never escape from his spirit. So when you're at church, he's there. When you're in sin, he's there. When you're in the darkness, he's there. When you're at the restaurant, when you're at your house, even when you're in the bathroom, he's there. Well, he's been in there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized. Oh, Oswaldo. Yeah. yeah. He's there, right? Um, so there's so many times, like, when I was a baby believer, when I was a baby Christian, I would always say, God, come to me, come to me, come to me. Help me to feel you. Help me to feel you. But it's like, wait. Hold up. Wait a minute. Is that a... Hold up, wait a minute. God sent his spirit into me, so how close can he even be? Because if he's already dwelling inside of my temple, how close does he have to be? There's so many times that we pray that God come close to me, meet me here, meet me here. But he's already there. The psalmist wrote, even if I were to hide in darkness, you're still there. He's still there. Even if he's in the light, he's there. If I go up to the heavens, he's there. Even if... Well, he's not there in hell, but he's still there, no matter what. Um, God's spirit is everywhere. Don't believe the devil's lies saying that God's not close, right? Uh, like emotions and feelings. I lost my grandmother this year, but I affirmed that this year is becoming the best year of my life. Because Satan's telling me that, that I'm not going to see my grandmother no more. Um, she's not going to be there. When I get into my house, I can't see her in her room no more. Right? And that God's not close to you. Because when my, when my grandmother passed, I started becoming led by emotions. Instead of being devoted to the Spirit of God, I got led by my emotions and my feelings. And then when my grandmother died, I kind of went walking with the flesh. I, I became into sin because I thought that God wasn't close to me. Like, how could you take away my grandmother away? But in, in God's Word, in the Bible, in the Bible says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Jesus is saying, come to me, who, you who are all weary and burdened. I don't know, like, the rest of that verse, but stop going with the emotions and the thoughts. And don't wait for your feelings to confirm what the Scripture already promises. The Scripture, which is God's Word, God is telling you that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He's even closer when He feels a million miles away. It's crazy. Um, next slide. 
I got four, four more slides left, so bear with me. The living water, John 7, 37 through 39. Y'all ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is how it goes. Verse 37. On the last day and the greatest day of the festival, Jesus, Jesus stood and said in, the, in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believe, believed in him were later to receive. Up that time the Spirit had not given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Mm, thank you, Alex. Right. Um, so Manny brought this. You brought this up on Sunday, right? This verse. Yeah, these specific verses. The living water. By this he meant the spirit. The living water is a spirit of God. Our bodies, our human bodies need what? We need water. We need food to survive in order to keep on living, in order to be healthy. Um and so does our souls. Have you, ever, have you ever read the Bible and come across that Jesus said that he is the bread of life? And Jesus gives us the living water. Y'all remember that uh, one story, the Samaritan woman at the well? If you drink from this well, I, very truly I tell you, you're going to be thirsty again. But if you drink from me, you're never going to thirst again. Jesus is the daily bread, uh, the living bread, right? That's food, that's spiritual food. You need Jesus in order to survive and to live eternally. But you also need the Holy Spirit. And from the Holy Spirit, from Jesus, he gives you the Holy Spirit. And that's your water. You need food, you need water to survive. You got the bread of life, so that's food. Now you got the living water. You're hydrated, you're well fed for eternal life. Oh, that's crazy. Um, now, how could you receive the Holy Spirit? Short answer, basically Jesus. Matthew 3.11 I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I. This is John the Baptist speaking. Whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So Jesus, the bread of life, he gives you himself as an offering. He gives you the bread of life, right, to eat. And he also gives you the living water, which is the Holy Spirit. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Through Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. Um, John 4, 13 through 14. John 4 through 13, John chapter 4, whatever. <laughs> Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them, which is the Holy Spirit, the living water, I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. You cannot enter eternal life without the living water. You cannot enter eternal life without the Holy Spirit. Just like your body needs bread or food and water, just so your soul does. It needs food and water. So in order for it to survive forever. Protein. Protein. Now, how do you know if you have the Holy Spirit? Um, short list. Confidence in salvation. Uh, I know as a baby believer or as sometimes in a believer, as a believer, there would be thoughts doubting your salvation. Um, that's why. What's up? Tell me what you have. Wait, what? David, Pastor David puts it this way, right? As, as in regards to how, why would the Holy Spirit leave you? Or why the Holy Spirit would never leave you? Why would God take away the one who helped? Who helps you fight the sin? Right? Like I said, or what the Holy Spirit through me said, I don't take no credit, no glory. 
or what Manny, what the Holy Spirit through Manny said, right? The Holy, the Holy Spirit leads you to holiness. It's not holiness that leads you to the Holy Spirit. That's works-based. That's performance-based, right? Why would God take away your only defense to fight off sin, right? If you were to fight off sin on your own, on your own strength, you're going to fall. You're not God. You're going to fall. Why would God take away your only thing that keeps you away from sin? Why would God take away the only thing that helps you to live holy? Is it clicking? Yeah. A lot of notes. Now, here's, um, the, here's the thing, too. You know how there's always stories of people that grew up in the church, but then they leave the faith? Yeah. Like, leave the church? Yeah. Um, a lot of times, those people were never in the faith to begin with. They never really had the Holy Spirit. So there's people that can get baptized. There's uh -huh. people that can get go to church every day. There's people that can, can do all the acts and have... They can look religious, they can look holy, but they're not actually living holy. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of Christians like that today. They rather look holy than actually live holy. Mm. And so a lot of people could have the religious, follow the religious system, but not actually be saved, not actually have the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? So evidence and signs, further evidence, further e signs, that you have the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's not on here, but A, conviction. If you simply, if you f ever feel convicted after sin, Holy Spirit's in you. Confidence in salvation. Uh, there's so many times, like in my life, where I doubted my salvation, right? But what God did is, right, sent His Son on the cross. And if you believe in what He did, you're saved. It's that simple. Um, so yeah. Second thing, godly character. Uh, to those who give in your life to Christ, did you ever notice a switch, a change, a repentance, a 180 in your life? Could you guys speak about it if you guys want to? Yeah. Um. So now that, like, I hated worship music, now I love it. Knowledge of truth. Um, if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, there's going to be so many times in your life that the Holy Spirit's going to bring up verses that you read from the Bible, and you're going to think about it, you're going to meditate about it, and it's going to be written on your heart. Um, so, like I said, like about that boss earlier today that, that was making me mad, um, Holy Spirit brought the gentleness, peace, kindness, self-control, self that stuff into my mind. I was like, okay. And then the holiness, holiness, now there's, now that the Holy Spirit's inside of you, there's an urge to live holy. There's an urge to put away all the sin, to put away the drugs, the weed, the alcohol, everything. Now there, there's a want in you to chase after holiness. There's a want in you to walk in righteousness and to be led by the Spirit. The Spirit of God leads you to holiness, and holiness does not lead you to the Holy Spirit. Um, next slide. <laughs> now that we know that you have the Holy Spirit, does the Holy Spirit have you? Shoot, I know I'm going long. I only got two more slides, by the way. Just, let's, let's keep going. I ain't going to stop until the Holy Spirit tells me to stop. Um, you have the Holy Spirit, but does the Holy Spirit have you? Right. So our bodies, our physical bodies, they're also called the temple of God. Um, when Jesus was, was arguing with the Pharisees, he said, tear, the, tear this temple down, and in three days I'll bring it back up. Uh, I got a Bible verse as well. 1 Corinthians six nineteen through 20 states, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Um... First thing, take care of your bodies, take care of your temples, what you eat, sleep, get a good eight hours. That stuff's good, right? Just like your IG post the other day. Take care of physical and spiritual healing. Spiritual and physical. Yes, like that's good. So your bodies is a temp. Your bodies is a temp. Your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
Um, and so, like, for instance, when, when new people or guests arrive into your house, what do you say to them? You're like, make yourself at home. You know what I mean? Make yourself at home. You don't? Yeah. <laughs> He's bad, man. But, like, as far as me and my house, when people enter your house, especially for me, if my friends are having a sleepover at my house, my mom will usually say, make yourself at home. Make yourself at home. Right? Same way as the Holy Spirit. Make yourself at home. I invite you into my life. I invite you into my temple. Um, but like I said, but does the Holy Spirit have you? You have the Holy Spirit inside of your temple, but does the Holy Spirit have you? What I mean by that, it's a deeper meaning. Does the Holy Spirit have your hands? Does the Holy Spirit have your, your toes, your legs? Does the Holy Spirit have your voice? So there are so many times that, that I think Christians... When they have the Holy Spirit, we put restrictions on, on the Holy Spirit in our lives, right? Like we say, um, Holy Spirit, come into my life, right? He's going to come into your life. But does the Holy Spirit have you? What I mean by that is, for instance, right? Holy Spirit, you could have all the relationships with my friends. You could be God over them. But you can't have the relationship that I have with my sexually immoral boyfriend or girlfriend. Holy Spirit, you could, you could have my voice to worship and to praise you and to exalt your name, to speak your name, but you can't have my voice when I'm cussing out somebody. You have the Holy Spirit, but does the Holy Spirit have you? Holy Spirit, you could have my hands, you have my right hand, my left hand, to worship you on Sundays and all the days, but you can't have my hands when I'm watching porn. You have the Holy Spirit, but does the Holy Spirit have you? It's a deeper, deeper meaning, right? So the Holy Spirit, now that he's into your life, now that you have invited him into your life, he's in your life, let him have it. He wants every aspect of your life, and that's faith. Some of you guys, sometimes people can't grow in their faith because they haven't fully surrendered something unto God. They haven't fully submitted unto God, right? Um for example, at camp, at camp, I, I opened up about my, this is bad, my pornography addiction, right? I said, Holy Spirit, you can have my temple, you can have my, my hands, but you can't have my hands when I'm doing the deed, when I'm doing the devil's work, when I'm satisfying my fleshly desire. It's all about submission. It's only until you come unto submission and until you give it to the Holy Spirit, right? It only it really started when when Manny had a men's group and we made we all made a covenant with our eyes, our ears, our mind that we're not going to watch it again, right? We submitted our hands, our minds, our eyes, our ears, everything. So we're not going to see it again, hear it again, do it again. It's submission. The name of the game. Submission. Submit to Christ. Um, because whatever you submit to, that becomes your master. Whatever you obey becomes your master. If you obey sin, that becomes your master. When you obey God, he becomes your master. You're only walking two paths. You're only serving one master. Mm. Damn. And then to end off, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That's biblical. That is biblical. When the Holy Spirit's inside of you, when you fully submit your sin, when you surrender the things that you desire unto Him, He's going to lead you to have no more sin. For me, I used to have suicidal thoughts. I don't think of them no more. I used to have bad anxiety. I would, I would have panic attacks. Don't have it no more. No more mental breakdowns. No more old me. None of this no more. That's me now. So where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, right? We're gonna, there's going to be times that I may fall. There, there's going to be times that I'm going to be rising to the top. And there's going to be times that, that, I, that I may sin. I mean, I can't, I can't be perfect, but I'm free from porn. Thank you, God. Right. But even Manny sins, your pastor sin. But even, even in your sin, even in the darkness, the Holy Spirit's going to bring you back. No matter what. So, let's do it.
That's all I got. That's all I got.